Dear students, question number six involves the concept of electric flux. The question says that a frustum of cone having radii 5 meter and 2 meter of its plane surfaces is kept in a uniform electric field 5 newton per coulomb perpendicular to the plane faces as shown in the figure. The magnitude of electric flux through the curved surface of the frustum is. Now dear students, since the electric field which is given here is uniform and the surface is closed. Therefore, the net flux of the electric field through the surface should be equal to zero. We can also write that the flux through the curved surface plus flux through the plane surfaces should add up to be zero. Or in other terms, the flux through the curved surface should be equal to negative of the flux through the plane surface. Now dear students, let us try to find out the flux through the plane surface. For the leftward plane surface, the area will be equal to pi multiplied by radius square. That will be 5 square. The direction of this area vector would be leftward, that is outwards. Now, the area of the rightward surface should be pi into radius square, that should be 2 square and the direction should be rightward, that is again outwards. So therefore, we can write the flux to be equal to flux through the plane surface which is right surface plus flux through the plane surface which is left surface. The flux through the right surface that is this surface can be written to be equal to 5 multiplied by pi into 2 square. While the flux through the left surface can be written to be equal to minus of 5 into pi into 5 square. Dear students, we are introducing a term minus 1 here because the angle between the area vector and the electric field for the left surface is equal to 180 degrees. This can be simplified into pi into 1, 0, 5, a negative. Therefore, dear students, the flux through the curved surface should be equal to negative of this, which will be 1, 0, 5, pi, Newton, meter square per coulomb. Therefore, dear students, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 2. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question. And the next question in the test is question number 7. Dear students, the question number 7 says that a charged particle of mass m and charge q is projected towards a fixed charged particle of charge 3q along the line joining them with a speed v from a very large distance. The minimum separation attained between the particles is. Now dear students, according to the question, there is a fixed charge of charge 3q and a particle of charge q which is projected towards the first charge with a separation very large and initial speed v. Now, dear students, since the initial separation is very large, we can assume that the initial potential energy between these two charged particles is equal to zero. The kinetic energy initially would be the kinetic energy of this charged particle only and would be equal to half m v square. Now, dear students, when they attain the minimum separation, the velocity of charge q must become zero. Let the minimum separation be equal to d. In this case, the final potential energy can be written as k q 3q by d. Whereas the final kinetic energy can be written as to be equal to 0. We know from the conservation of energy that the initial energy which will be equal to potential plus kinetic energy should be equal to the final energy which is also equal to the final potential plus final kinetic. 
Now, dear students, if we substitute the values from these two equations in this particular equation, we can write that k q 3 q by d should be equal to half m v square. Solving this particular equation, we can find d to be equal to 6 k q square divided by m v square. So, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question, which is question number 8. Dear students, question number 8 involves an infinite ladder of capacitive networks. And the question says that the capacitance of each capacitor as shown in the circuit is C. The effective capacitance of the circuit between terminals A and terminal B is. Now, dear students, we know that when n identical capacitors are connected in series, then the final capacitance can be written as C by n. Now, using this principle, we can easily see that the capacitance of this network should be equal to C, while the capacitance of this arm should be equal to C by 2. On the similar principle, the capacitance of this arm should be equal to C by 4 and the capacitance of this arm should be equal to C by 8. This goes till infinity. And since all these capacitive arms are in parallel, the net capacitance would be addition of all these individual net capacitances. So, we can write that C net should be equal to C plus C by 2 plus C by 4 plus C by 8. Now, this turns out to be the summation of an infinite GP with the ratio of terms less than 1. Now, we know that the summation of such an infinite GP can be written as A divided by 1 minus R, where R is the ratio of terms and A is the first term. In this particular equation, R is equal to half and A is equal to C, which is the first term. So, we can write C net to be equal to C divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 which will be equal to 2c. So, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 4. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question, which is question number 9. Dear students, question number 9 involves an infinite ladder of resistors and the question says, that the effective resistance of the infinite resistance ladder circuit between terminals A and B as shown in the figure is. Now, dear students, we can see that the resistance of this particular section of the circuit is similar as the resistance of this particular section of the circuit. The only difference is that in this particular section of the resistance ladder, the resistances have values two times the resistances in the complete network of the circuit. So, in this particular infinite ladder circuit, we can draw a simplified diagram that if the net resistance is equal to x, then we can draw a simplified circuit diagram 2 ohms, 4 ohms, the remaining resistance of this circuit which should be equal to 2x. Now, dear students, as we have assumed that the net resistance of the complete circuit is x, we can write that the resistance of these two resistances combined would be 2x into 4 divided by 2x plus 4. Since these two are in parallel, and this parallel combination of resistances is in series with 2 ohm resistance. So, plus 2. This should be equal to x. Now, dear students, solving this particular equation, we can simplify it in the form as x square minus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. 
and x can be calculated to be equal to 4 plus under root of 16 plus 16 by 2 or 2 plus 2 root 2. So the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1. Now dear students, let us proceed to the next question that is question number 10. Dear students, the question number 10 says that a non-conducting solid sphere of radius r has a uniform charge density. The graph representing variation of magnitude of electric field as a function of distance x from the center of the sphere is. Now dear students, it is a very straightforward question because in a non-conducting solid sphere, we know that the electric field inside is equal to rho by 3 epsilon naught into x where rho is the volume charge density and x is the distance from the center of the point where the electric field is to be calculated. The electric field outside can be written as k q by x square where q is the net charge on the sphere and x is again the distance from the center of the sphere. Now we can see that inside the sphere the electric field varies linearly whereas outside the sphere the electric field varies inversely proportional to x square. So the best possible representation of this variation should be option number 1. Now dear students let us proceed to the next question that is question number 11.